Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Ag Innovation News Podcast, presented by the Agricultural Utilization Research Institute of Minnesota. I'm Dan Scogan, Director of Government and Industry Relations for AURI. Guests on the Innovation News Podcast will shed light on innovations in value-added agriculture, highlight important voices and work being done throughout the Minnesota ag sector, and will educate the public about resources and organizations that support Minnesota agriculture. The Egg Innovation News Podcast today is joined by Colette Drager of The Meadery, a company that believes access feeds inspiration. So they partner with small businesses to curate personalized meat collections that customers can purchase online and have shipped directly to their door. Colette Drager, welcome to the program. Well, thanks for having me. We appreciate it. Give us the background on The Meadery and who it serves. The Meadery, effectively, our website went live in April of 2022 with the actual selling beginning in early May. So, I mean, we've had a good seven-month great showing from from consumers out there interested in, in looking at local farmers' products. But, I mean, prior to that, I mean, we had been talking about this for probably about 2019 is when we started seriously talking about a portion of the model. And then the model continued to really grow and evolve and actually got to a point of we're really going to do this post-pandemic. Well, that's one of my follow-up questions I have to ask. What was the thought process in a pandemic to put a company like this together? Well, we're a farm family, multi-generations, and we we get together. We enjoy each other's company. We enjoy, you know, talking and dreaming and and certainly always, you know, having a good meal together and and the, the first part of our model really was about developing a community that was uh, also enjoyed all of the, the quality meats and the smoking and the, the different artisan types of, I guess, meats we, in, we enjoy with just developing a social community around that. And really, as farmers during the pandemic, and, and that, was, that was an idea, right? I mean, it, it really hadn't gone a long ways at that point. But during the pandemic, as uh, primarily hog farmers, we, you know, suffered along with all other farmers in terms of the supply chain and the backup issues that that were a part of that. And then just, you know, via media, seeing that, you know, the meat cases were empty. So that's when we really started saying, you know, if we want to do something and put our time and effort into it, let's do something more impactful. Let's do something in which we directly connect people to the the quality local meats that we know are out there. So that's where it started. It's about feeding the inspiration of all of these meat enthusiasts with just the access to local producers. I got to believe there's some great meals at your house. Yeah, I can't say that I'm the great cook, but oh my gosh, yes, we, we have some fantastic meals. I think there are a lot of families out that have that, have that tradition to to enjoy meals together, but I think there's also a growing group of people that that are enjoying the hobbies, starting to really understand that 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 meal at home together is you know very valuable. Good time for sharing of stories and in, enjoying quality protein. Well, if I was going to explain the meadery to somebody, and I've just briefly looked at your website, I would say it's a company online that delivers meats to your house. So I want you to explain what the meadery is from your business perspective. It's a one-stop shop to quality meat to your door. But what it really is doing, it's an online platform that allows farm producers to sell their products straight to consumers. If you were to try to get a, a quick visual of what you're looking at here, it would be like taking the butcher box, you know, the big, the big box meat companies and merging that with an, an Etsy which would be, you know, the, the small shops that are available, and then giving it that tone, that flavor, that environment of a local farmer's market. So what we've done then is made that connection, but then provided the resources to these local farm producers and small markets. So we worked on eco-friendly shipping materials and a process that collaboratively, if we work together, we could do it at a, at a much better cost and also, you know, just put the talent and resources into to that side of the business so our producers could focus on what they do best. So if I'm going to understand it better, Colette, you're kind of the connector. 
We are the connector at two levels. We're the connector for that, that farm producer. So they're raising the crops, raising the animals, but they're also then the people who are packing these meat products, you know, directly packing these for the consumers and placing notes in the boxes and such. So we're, we're the connector on that side because we're also bringing them the consumer. You know, as I said, when we first started, you know, thinking about what the meadery would be, it was, it was about a community, a community of meat enthusiasts, which is, is what we just like to call people who like to, you know, share and prepare and share meats together. So what we do on the other hand is, is really connect the consumer to that to that quality meat as well. So, I mean, telling the stories of these farm producers, giving them direct links. So, you know, we, we focus on, you know, you know, recipes or a process, but, you know, like here, click into this and there, there it is. There's just a, a, a real live farm operation for you to learn about, learn about their, you know, the, the breeds, the, the quality of meats, the cuts that they're putting together for you to purchase. So there's um, a complete, you know, full circle connection for both. Colette, I want to talk about uh, some of the products you offer and how people can get those products, but I want to go back to the family business. That is a lot of family members under one business. What are the dynamics like? As I said, we are we are two generations, a team of 12, all family members, and that particularly was very important to our second generation. Myself, my husband, my, my brother-in-law and family, it's our adults children who are out there saying it's important to be to be eco-friendly it's important to connect through social channels it's important to to know that there are people out there who are curious about the the foods and the quality that that we take advantage sitting you know in in southern minnesota and so so what we do is we we tell that story we try to tell it in a an interesting way we try to do it in an engaging way where where there, you know we all have things to learn and we emphasize not only the, the hobbyist out there, but those who are looking, who may not be eating as much protein as they used to, but they're really always looking for quality protein and that they appreciate that, it, that it's, uh, you know, this, the small farm connection. But I think what we also do is that I think many of us, we in, enjoy and would love to support our small businesses, but it's not always as convenient as we'd like it to be. And so that's what we're trying to to blend in there as well with bringing e-commerce to the, you know, the, the options for for the consumer as well as the eco-friendly boxing and shipping direct to door. So Colette, I'm just curious, what kind of products does the meadery offer? At the heart of what the meadery is, we're an online community for amateur hobbyists. So when we select our partners that we work with and create these meat bundles, we, we try to keep that in mind. Our products are going to cover the spectrum for the for the hobbyists looking for those those bellies or ribs. And it's going to also then include show stoppers like, you know, Wagyu brisket, tomahawk steaks and chops, and then just all of those great top quality items for, for everyday and grilling, like dry aged steaks for the grill and chops and roasts. Well, it's great variety, but as you think about your customers or maybe your business plan, are you planning to add anything in the near future to that list? Listening to the customers, there are people who would enjoy a grass-fed option. And so we're currently vetting and we hope to bring on a grass-fed producer as well, which again, fits very much into our model to to offer that uh, variety to our customers. Um, perhaps people who haven't given that a try before, but they're not interested in, a, you know, perhaps like a, a, a quarter animal, they're able to get a small bundle and give it a try. I just want to let everyone know that they are listening to the Egg Innovation News podcast. And uh, today we are talking about the meadery and we're visiting with uh, Colette Drager. It's been an interesting conversation so far, Colette. When you talk to me about farmers and ranchers that you're working with, are you going outside of the state of Minnesota to uh, supply some of those meats for the meadery? Being in our first year here, we are very much focused on the state of Minnesota. You know, as farmers in Minnesota, we know and have contacts with just some top quality producers. I would say in time that we'll move to a few producers outside of the state, um, particularly Wisconsin areas. But right now, the quality within our own state is extraordinary. I know looking at your website, it just feels like your company is really focused on using those local resources. Is that important to you as part of your business plan? Very much so. 
And I think it's important to consumers as well. When we think about ourselves as being consumers, we always try to to use local resources. Um, sometimes, it, you know, for whatever reason, it's not convenient or we don't have the, the offering. So we try to think like that at the meadery, and we try to, to make that connection to connect people to the local top quality, but give them some of the benefits of, you know, working with the large groups, such as the, the ship to door, the eco-friendly, the variety, and just some guarantees around this is top quality through our own guarantee at the meadery. The other thing that comes to mind for me is uh, sometimes people are just intimidated by having a good piece of meat or a specialty cut. Do you offer any preparation tips or recipes on how to pull these meals together? We're self-proclaimed, you know, we're, we're enthusiasts is what we call ourselves. So we're amateurs, we're curious, and that's exactly the type of person that we want as a part of our community. Those who are willing to perhaps share a, a new idea, you know, the successes, the failures, the people who just enjoy that community sense that we're in this together. So we we ourselves are, are putting some of our, our tips out there, but we know that as hobbyists, we all have things to contribute. And part of what we're doing as well is we, as a social community, are looking for people to to participate in, you know, sharing of photos and recipe tips and even taking over some of our social on a, on a regular basis. So there are other companies that offer something similar, Meatbox subscriptions, for example. How do you differentiate your company from the others that are out there? Probably in a number of ways. I'm not sure if it makes a difference, but we are farmers ourselves in what we do, and we are consumers and amateurs ourselves as well. So we try to put ourselves in the position in what we offer. And at this time, we do not offer any regular subscription. What we do is we are out there to ask people to test the variety that is that is in the, the state of Minnesota. So if, if you want to try a, you know, a Wagyu cross from Echo, Minnesota, if you want to try uh, the Mangalitsa pork from from Blue Earth, Minnesota. You've got an opportunity at a at a small scale to give those things a try. And you know, down the line, if someone says, "Hey, I would just like to get a box every month," we are very happy to always do those things on a custom line. And you know, if if that's an interest where people would like that subscription, we will do that for them. Oh, great! But it's not in the initial order that you have to join or or become a, a regular customer to start with. No. When you go to the site, everything is open to all. So you do not have to be a member to see the full you know, variety and, and participate in that. If people want to participate, they can provide an email and we will have some member benefits, you know, like first serve. Like we have a, a few producers that when they put something on the site, just because of its specialty and limited quantities, um, they do, do go quickly. So members do know about those types of things first. So there's a benefit to it, but man, it's, it's out there for everybody, all of us as meat enthusiasts and hobbyists. Great. I was very curious about setting the price. Is that the farmer that sets the price or does the meadery weigh in on that? The meadery supports the farmer. All of the bundles that you see on the site are in the partner shops. They are selling directly to the consumers. So we provide some parameters to help provide some consistency across the site for the consumer and also support the, the shipping and materials. However, the partner is making that sale and actually then also packing and shipping it directly to the consumer. When you're thinking about supporting Minnesota agriculture overall, how would you explain that the meadery is one of those pieces of support? How do you support Minnesota Ag? Well, from our standpoint, it's very easy. You know, you, you tell the stories and you share it with in, the enthusiasm and passion that, that we already have as, you know, residents and farmers in Minnesota. And then the top quality just really stands on its own. Are producers looking for you? Are you looking for producers? If somebody's listening today that wants to join the team, what's that process like? I would say both. Currently, We've been very successful in either consumers recommending producers or producers reaching out to us directly. We are not about having volumes of producers necessarily on the site because it does take time to vet and making sure that everybody that's on the site is, is providing a, a top quality line and the variety that we're looking for. So if producers are interested, we would certainly welcome to reach out to us through the contact at the meadery or through the phone or email connections that we have on our site. 
we are looking for that variety. We're looking for that top quality. We want the consumers who go to our site to be able to count on that we've done our job at the meadery. Talk about that vetting process a little bit from your end. How do you make sure you're bringing the right products and quality products into your process? The first thing we do is make sure that these are hidden gems. If they are the groups that the local communities are turning to, we know that, number one, that it, it's, a, it's a group that's worth pursuing. And then again, we look at the variety. Just as I mentioned you know, earlier about grass-fed or the different breeds of pork and beef in terms of whether that be practices, breed, processes that they use. I mean, there's some great processors in the state of Minnesota as well in terms of you know whether it's a, a dry age process or some of the value-added packages that they offer. So number one, hidden gem, a variety, and then those who are also interested in that collaborative process. I mean, we do all this together. So you have to be a producer that is like, we're in this together. Let's let's grow this and, and show the nation what quality we have. Okay. Talk about the future. We talked a little bit about changing some of the meats that you might be offering, I guess, but are there any other changes or additions coming in the near future? We're going to do more and more for the hobbyist, first and foremost. So as a hobbyist out there right now, I mean, you can order multiple, say ribs, say you want to do something fun for a small group and have a small competition. We also have boxes like the the wild side, or if you want to try even like a beef tongue and the whole animal type of bundles. You'll also see we're going to be offering a 10-pound pork trimmings box. So if you like to, in your garage or, or basement, like to make pork sausage, we'll be expanding some things in that way. The other thing we'll be doing is continuing to research as hobbyists, are there ways to produce small batch excellence for the consumer? And so so hopefully we come out with more content, particularly, and, and products uh, down the line here in 23. And I want to make sure that we get a chance to get some contact information out today, Colette. But talk to me a little bit about social takeovers. What's that all about for the meadery? So social takeovers are things we do through our Instagram and Facebook, where as an online community, we're looking to share. And so our model is based on inspiration and access, uh, gaining inspiration from all of us as meat enthusiasts and, and sharing of, of recipes, tips and such, and then combining that with access to these top quality farmers and producers. So with the social takeovers, in, in addition to asking people to you know, tag and share the, their meat creations, perhaps send us photos, we take it to another level and ask people to reach out to us and say, hey, we'll take the site over for a couple days, uh, take one of, um, one of the meat bundles and create recipes, share tips. But at the same time, you do not have to be an expert. We're looking for people who are just honest, curious folks that want to participate in this community. So Man, if anyone is out there that enjoys that the social takeover, I, like I said, we're two generations of family, and the younger people in our group really enjoy this aspect of business, and it's been very enjoyable to just get to know people who are hobbyists just as we are. So let's wrap it up with contact information. What is the best way to get to the meadery and, and get our questions answered or make an order, or how do you like to be contacted? Our website is themeaterymn.com, and that is the absolute best way. Put a lot of effort into the website to explain who we are, tell the stories of our partners to allow with ease to be able to select bundles and make purchases. And then there's a full community and contact section in there as well. So if you turn to the site, you can go to um, contact at the Meadery MN or just complete the form on the site. And we are very responsive and we'll get back to people right away. And so that could be anything from looking to participate with a social takeover. Perhaps it's a hobbyist that is looking for something special or someone who's planning a small event that would like uh, more volumes. Small businesses, we just we just had a group the other day that is for all the birthdays in the company are, are sending boxes out. So we just put together a program like that. So there's multiple ways to reach us and we'll respond and, and very excited to talk to anyone who is also an, an enthusiast. Well, Colette Drager from The Meadery, it's been a pleasure to uh, have you on our podcast this week and thank you for all your time. Really appreciate it. Thanks so much. We've been visiting with Colette Drager from The Meadery. 
Thanks for joining us today, and thank you for listening to the Egg Innovation News Podcast, presented by the Agricultural Utilization Research Institute of Minnesota. Thanks to our podcast crew, Eric Evans, AURI Director of Communications, and Lisa Martinez, AURI Communications Coordinator and Editor of this production. To learn more about AURI, go to auri.org.